We're in the electricity control room for Britain. Uh, this is a special place for me. This is the heartbeat of the British electricity system. There are uh, 10 or 20 engineers in the room here who are controlling second by second the electricity system for our country. But in 1987, I came to what was then uh, system operation and I knew that I had come home. And to this day, professionally, system operation is where my heart is. It's, um, and, and why is that? Because when you walk into the control room, you realize how, how important, how, um, how technical, how real time it all is, how you're bringing together all of the elements of a very complex industry and you're making it work second by second in quite an, an, an integrated and complex puzzle that needs to be solved all the time. That, uh, that was incredibly attractive to me back then. Uh, I've carried that through the subsequent 25 years and always enjoyed being in control rooms and seeing what goes on here. People that work in this control room have a very strong ethos of keeping the lights on. They know how important it is to businesses, to society. They know that at this level, where, the, where we control the transmission system in the, uh, in, in the British Isles, we know that if something goes wrong in here, it can affect millions of people. My background was really in power stations. I was the power, a power station manager at one time and then responsible for managing a group of power stations and it was suggested to me that I, I was made an offer to become the system operation engineer for the Central Electricity Generating Board, which was a promotion, but in a different line entirely. I had to think about this for some time, but the challenge of this and the intellectual content of the role I was going to have to uh, adopt, I found very attractive. So that's how I became involved with system operation as the Central Electricity Generating Board System Operation Engineer. This was when the 500 megawatt units were coming into operation and they were fairly unreliable in their early days. But each year we looked at what our margins would be and shut down oak plant that we thought we could dispense with. But that left us with fine margins so that we were always fairly close to the wind with capacity. What had only just come into the job when the 1971 miners strike uh, came and <coughs> uh, we had to apply voltage reductions and I remember uh, the chairman at one time telling me that we couldn't continue with these voltage reductions because no longer were they able to cook steaks effectively in the stock exchange canteen. We were in the middle of a political, <coughs> as it were, battle frequently and uh, this was something that caused us to feel that what we were doing was significant and in a sense it gave you some degree of job satisfaction that you were trying to deal with problems that were important to society and to the government of the day. So it was a double-edged thing, a cause of concern but a cause of satisfaction when one dealt with, with affairs in a satisfactory way. I think there was a deep sense of public service in the industry as a whole and certainly I felt a, a, a deep sense of public service. And <coughs> As a result of that, I felt obliged to, or felt that, uh, that I would like to continue working for the Central Electricity Journey Board because of the pivotal role it uh, played and the importance of it into society. The job these people, uh, my colleagues, do in the control centre is, is, is absolutely you know, an essential one for, for the welfare of the country. They, they really do keep the, the lights on. It is about um, Yes, there's a lot of automation, but we are always adjusting the automation. And if you didn't have colleagues here with great skills, it would soon go off the rails and one would have a big shutdown. So uh, I have a great deal of respect. I don't work on shift anymore, but I have a great deal of respect for the people who, who do those hours. And I ha as well as all the people who do all the prep work, bring in the plans at the beginning of the day. And, you know, and then you've got all your IT people who are looking after all the computing systems and all the control systems and all the comms bringing it into here. It's, it really is a team effort. And, you know, and I, I just think 
just a great place to work because you really do feel you're, you're contributing something. It is such a complex system to start with. When I joined CGB, there were 220 power stations and each one of different vintage, uh, some with very primitive equipment. And indeed, as time went on, you had to model the equipment's behavior because there were some unexplained things happening. As operational planning manager, my job basically was to look at the system five years ahead. You look at great detail one year ahead because you're now integrating the transmission outages with the generation outages. Uh, and then you study every week of that uh, year ahead to check whether the general plan for the outages is in good shape and that there would be no shortage of generation and that the system will be secure within the security standards. So uh, you then start drilling down, uh, you do month ahead, you then do week ahead and then you do day ahead. And indeed that is how the whole thing has got to be checked and checked again. So it's belt, braces, sellotape, chewing gum and whatever else you can find. It was, the, it was a very challenging uh, uh, job. It was intellectual, it was 24-7, it was exciting and you learned all the time and you applied the lessons you have learned. The main driver for my job was that it used my technical knowledge and uh, I got a buzz out of doing things and making things happen. And the fact that the consumer was at the other end of the situation. My wife will say, tell you I got a very much a public service attitude because we had a, a hur um, was the hurricane. It was a very high windy period during Christmas time, <clears throat> and I walked out of the house and left her for two days while the roof tiles were floating off and all the rest of it because I was managing the situation. Uh, I'd always had felt a bond with the staff who had to go out in all weathers. Um, and climb towers, defrosts and so forth. And I'd always had that bond. And that, oh, to me, was what drove me and what was my linchpin.